Hey everybody, how's it going? Welcome to No DQ and a video right here on NoDQ.com as well as the YouTube channel as well as No DQ and a videos affiliate RingsideNews.com. This is going up late Monday night into Tuesday morning coming off the final edition of Raw until the WWE Royal Rumble pay-per-view one against all Roman Reigns versus Brock Lesnar and 28 bodies. Basically, that's what it is. It's essentially a one-on-one -on -one match with 28 other people involved doing run-ins unless we get a few surprises, Triple H or AJ Styles or whatever. But anyways, I'll talk more about my thoughts on the pay-per-view with Jeff Meacham and my predictions. For now, let's get to your questions regarding the Royal Rumble and other topics. First one today comes from Interstate Kyle. Hey Aaron, do you think the fans will boo Roman Reigns like they did last year, or are the fans finally starting to get behind them? Well, just as fans were starting to cheer for Roman Reigns this past week on Raw, when Roman Reigns speared Brock Lesnar, the crowd booed. The crowd was pretty dead for the entire segment and the entire show as a whole, but when Reigns hit the spear, and especially the second spear, the fans did boo Reigns. So it could be a long night this coming Sunday in Orlando. I think that it will depend on how many hardcore wrestling fans you have in attendance. It is the city of Orlando. There are lots of hardcore fans there, NXT fans, TNA fans, whatever's left of TNA fans. There are fans coming in from other major cities, fans coming in from Miami, Tampa, and so on. You're going to have a good amount of hardcore fans. This is one of the biggest pay-per-views of the year, and there's a decent chance Roman's going to get booed again. It's being booked for fans to cheer for him. Psychologically, you want to cheer for Roman Reigns because he's the one guy with the odds stacked against him, against all these other people. He's the number one entry in the Royal Rumble, and naturally, you want to cheer for the guy that's the underdog, but he just happens to be Roman Reigns, and a lot of people don't like him. So it will be very interesting to see what kind of reaction he gets. I'm guessing it's going to be 50-50 at best, and I think that there's a fairly decent chance that he gets more boos than cheers. All right, this one comes from Chris Cruz. Was WWE teasing AJ Styles when Stephanie said that someone that the WWE has never seen could win the Royal Rumble. I definitely feel that that was playing off of the rumors and speculation about not just AJ Styles, but the New Japan Pro Wrestling guys as a whole possibly being involved in the Royal Rumble. I wish they had put more of an emphasis on the idea that not all of the slots are filled up and there could be a few surprises. You know, Michael Cole could have said something, but they really didn't do much beyond that little tease by Stephanie. Um, and I think probably only the most hardcore wrestling fans saw that as a reference to AJ Styles. Probably your average viewer watching had no idea what she was talking about, really. Uh, so it might have been better if the announcers played up on it and said, you know, there's a few spots left open. Who knows? Anything can happen in the WWE, and maybe we'll see a few surprises this Sunday at the Royal Rumble. But they did not do that. All right, this one comes from Beast Slayer. If Brock Lesnar gets eliminated at the Royal Rumble, would it kill his hype and star power going into WrestleMania 32? I expect Brock Lesnar to be booked very strongly in the Royal Rumble. He's going to go out there and he's probably going to take uh, 15, 20 people to Suplex City. I mean, the way Raw ended, you had the Wyatts laying out Brock Lesnar, you had the League of Nations laying out Sheamus. So what's basically going to happen is Roman Reigns will eliminate a bunch of people. He'll take out a bunch of people. And then when Brock Lesnar comes out, he'll clean house. He'll eliminate a ton of people. And then it'll be down to Roman Reigns and Brock Lesnar. And then that's where the whole speculation comes in about will Triple H get involved in what's going to be the finish? What kind of controversy will there be, if any? Um, but I expect Lesnar to be booked very strongly, and if he does not win the Royal Rumble, he'll still be made to look as strong as possible. I mean, it's really the Brock and Roman show this Sunday at the Royal Rumble. Those are the two guys that are clearly at a level above everyone else in the company, and those are the two guys that are going to be protected, and the match is going to be built around those two guys. And I got this one here from Gareth Smith. A up mate, could WWE have another Rumble backlash, but this time with AJ Styles possibly being in and he isn't? 
please answer in video. What I think would actually be worse is if AJ Styles showed up in the Rumble match and then did not win. I know some fans on the internet are saying it would be better if WWE waited until after the Rumble to debut him because it could have a Daniel Bryan effect where he shows up and then fans get excited and think maybe AJ Styles can actually win this and then he gets tossed out and JBL says, uh, Welcome to the big leagues, kid. And that's it for AJ Styles in the Royal Rumble. He does a few moves and then he gets thrown out and the fans get pissed off. Um, so one would think that that would have to be a concern and that might be a logical reason to hold off on AJ. I think some fans would be disappointed if AJ did not show up in the Rumble, but um, I think it would be worse if he did show up and then got eliminated and the fans... Um, had this idea that maybe he could win the Rumble, but then he doesn't. So, it's really hard to say. Alright, this one comes from Mark. Hey Aaron, do you think it's possible that The Undertaker will make an appearance in the Royal Rumble this Sunday? If there was going to be a dark horse contender to win, it would be The Undertaker, because there's been a lot of talk about this year's WrestleMania being The Undertaker's last match, and what better way to go out than defending the WWE title. Now, originally, I guess the plan was to do Undertaker versus John Cena, which is something that I speculated on uh, for a few months. I think that that is a possibility because WWE has not brought up The Undertaker's name, and if he was 100% for sure not going to be involved, then they would just throw out his name as a possible contender. But there's been no mention of him, and that could be for good reason. Maybe there is no reason. Maybe they just haven't mentioned his name for the hell of it. Who knows? But I would say that there is a possibility. I'm not sure if there's a big possibility, but um, it's definitely something that could happen in the Royal Rumble as a big surprise that people don't see coming. And uh, Undertaker winning, I think, would make a lot of people happy. I think that that would satisfy people if The Undertaker won the Royal Rumble. I think that that would, that would be a good way to make sure that there's no fan backlash and the fans are satisfied when the pay-per-view is over. Undertaker winning, there's almost no way to screw that up. Alright, this one comes from the Daniel Allen. Why is there so much hate for Kane, Mark Henry, and Big Show? Ten years ago, there were loads of veterans Finley, Regal, Duggan, Dave Taylor, and so forth. You have to keep in mind that guys like Finley um, were not part of the roster for a decade. The thing about Big Show and Mark Henry and Kane is they have been full-time on the roster for almost 20 years now. I mean, in Mark Henry's case, he got injured a lot, uh, but with Kane... He's been a fixture on WWE programming for almost 20 years straight. Really, um, if you include Isaac Yankum, I guess you really can't count Isaac Yankum because it was a different character, but he's been on television as Kane for almost 19 years now without much of any kind of a break at all. And uh, same thing with Big Show since 1999, besides that one period from the end of 2006 through the beginning of 2008, uh, Big Show's been on WWE television almost non-stop. So fans get tired of the TV characters. When you see the same character week after week, um, for year after year, eventually people get tired of it. So I mean, that's why there's a lot of backlash and fans feel that these guys just need to step down and allow new stars to be focused on. And uh, to be fair, Big Show and Kane, um, they really do not have significant roles on WWE television these days, but um, you know, they're, they're being hyped up for the Rumble, of course, but uh, well, at least Big Show is. I'm not even sure if Kane's been mentioned or not. Um, I'm not sure why. I mean, you might as well bring in Kane for the Royal Rumble. I mean, this Royal Rumble really needs the star power. And uh, I would have made an argument for making a bigger deal out of Kane being in the Rumble, but, you know, they didn't do that. Um, but, yeah, that's why there's been so much hate, if you want to call it that, towards those guys, because they've just been around so many years, week after week after week. All right, this one comes from Extremes Don. Have WWE introduced a new wrestler from outside WWE in the Royal Rumble match before? That's an interesting question. I mean, WWE has introduced new characters... Um, from NXT that they called up to the main roster. Rusev is a perfect example from two years ago. There have been guys that have debuted from other promotions in a match on the pay-per-view, not in the actual Royal Rumble match, guys like Taz. There have been outsiders that have appeared 
in the Royal Rumble match as a one-off appearance. Um, like 1997, you had several luchadors um, from other promotions in Mexico appearing at the Royal Rumble pay-per-view. Um, I'm not sure when the last time there was an actual wrestler from another company debuting in the Royal Rumble match as a full-time WWE superstar. Um, if anybody out there knows one, go ahead and mention it in the YouTube comments. All right, this one comes from Sean T. Flick. The next live special will be in Canada, and that's a question. To cater to that audience, do you see an Owens Jericho main event? Please answer in video. That would be interesting. I mean, it would definitely be a good idea to maybe put Canadian Star versus Canadian Star in a match. I mean, I'm all for that idea. Uh, I would not mind that, and it might be a good way to utilize Jericho. Um, so sure, why not? Um, it's going to be in Canada, so you might as well have as many Canadian performers on the show as possible. Um, so yeah, I, I, I would say that that's a good choice for a match to do on that show, and it's not like... Um, that show really has all that much to do with WrestleMania. It's being billed as the road to WrestleMania, but it's essentially a televised house show. So why not be creative and just do matches that specifically cater to the Canadian fans? All right, this one comes from Grant Peoples. What version of the Nation of Domination was your favorite? I would have to say the version after WrestleMania 14 when The Rock kicked out Farouk and became the leader of the nation. Uh, that is when the group really started to take off and all the members started to uh, rise in the ranks in WWE and you had new superstars being built, most notably The Rock who really had that as a launching pad. The nation was his launching pad to superstardom in WWE going back to when he joined Farouk's group and then he eventually took over. And also guys like D'Lo Brown and Mark Henry, um, those guys, as well as The Godfather, really took off during that period in mid-1998 when they were feuding with DX. So, you know, I would say that that was the best incarnation of the nation. All right, this one comes from Nicholas. What's your favorite opening theme for Raw and SmackDown? Please answer in video. For Raw, I'd have to say the Thorn in Your Eye, the, the remix, I think the one they used from late 98 through, I believe, 2002 when they did the brand extension. I mean, that was my favorite Raw theme song um, overall. And then the Beautiful People by Marilyn Manson for SmackDown. I mean, I just like that song in general. I thought that that was really fitting um, as a wrestling theme song. And I remember for like two weeks, they used it as the Raw's War theme. All right, that'll wrap it up for this edition of No DQ and A video. Thanks as always for watching. NoDQ.com has got you covered with all the latest news and rumors regarding the Royal Rumble pay-per-view. Make sure you subscribe if you haven't already at youtube.com slash nodqcaw. Stay tuned this week. Myself and Jeff Meacham will be giving our Royal Rumble pay-per-view predictions. Like this video, give it a thumbs up, share it on Facebook and Twitter, and I will see you guys next time for another edition of No DQ&A Video.